The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today I am joined again with uh, Lisa Greenleaf. Welcome. Hi. Thank Welcome you. Back. It was nice to be here. Uh, now, Lisa is, uh, is an artist, but we're not going to be talking, talking about art today. We're going to be talking about Reiki. Right. And uh, I remember you mentioning something about that in our last interview or maybe mm -hmm. prior to the show, and I thought I'd like to have you back on to talk a little bit about it. Right. Uh, I had a friend who, uh, up north that uh, she owned a gym, and she was talking about Reiki back, you know, eight, right. eight, ten years ago. So come to find out you're involved with it as well. So tell us I what am. is Reiki? Okay. So Reiki is actually one of my modalities I use, but it's um, energy healing. Mm -hmm. And what I love about Reiki now is that a lot of hospitals, nurses, and alternative places are recognizing that this is great alternative medicine. So if you've got an ache, a pain, stress, or you, know, you need to relax, this is another treatment that's really good, and it's a gentle, hands-on touching um, modality. And what I love about it is anybody doing Reiki, you kind of put your hands or your head on your head, and it just relaxes you. Let me stop you right there. Now, mm -hmm. you said modality. Mm -hmm. That triggers in my mind. Uh, my wife, she does uh, mammographies. That's a modality. Right. right. Uh, she also does x-rays. That's a modality. It's just another term it's that another we use. Term for... So we can say treatment right. or modality. Okay. So I switch back and forth because it's kind of the same thing. So there's a lot of modalities out here, but I'm using... And it's a recognized modality. Absolutely. Reiki is a recognized modality. Interesting. But there's so many other energy healing techniques out there. Mm -hmm. I got connected with Reiki just because, you know, stress is in life. You know, I have kids and job and all this kind of stuff, and I really was drawn to it. Because, again, when somebody put their hands and I would, they're like, just breathe and relax, I was like, oh, I could feel it. Let me interject again, mm -hmm. uh, if, I, if I can. The, the whole idea of healing mm -hmm. uh, isn't the touch the TV and you'll be healed type of thing. Right. So just to get away from that, it, it's, it really is more of a, when somebody touches you, you either stiffen up right. or you loosen up. And I, let me just throw this out. I remember mm -hmm. one time I went to hug my grandfather. He was, right. He was in his 80s. Right. It wasn't something that he was used to. He right. Was, it was a hard period of life for him. And I went to hug him, and, and he went like this. Right. And I, I can, I'll never forget that. I, I know he, he loved me. Right. But he was not comfortable with somebody touching him. And I wonder how much of that stress that he wore all his life, you know, was it, was it a whatever. Right. But this kind of breaks that barrier. It does. And one thing I want to tell you about the whole touching and hugging is when, you, when you're doing energy work, what I've learned is, you know, you, little, you meet a lot of people that are healers and everything. They've got to ask you permission, like, you know what, I do energy work, and I do, because I do other modalities. Do you mind if I, they're like, oh, my back hurts, or I'm having a headache. I always ask permission before I touch somebody. Because like your grandfather, maybe he just wasn't used to getting touched so much. Right. And so it was like foreign to him. Right. So as an energy healer, I'm always asking permission. Like, you know, this is a kind of a, a gentle way of doing this. Do you, do you mind? And I think that's with everybody. When you meet somebody, this is why I like it. You can, you can read somebody's energy, which you clearly were reading your grandfather's energy. You oh, felt sure. him stiffen up. And that's where we're all, and I know this is out we're all energy. So like, let's say you're in a crowded room and all of a sudden you feel somebody approach you and you're like, and they just start talking, but you can sort of feel like, oh, I like this guy. 
He might not even talk, but you like their energy. Right. And then you're talking, and then all of a sudden somebody walks up, and they're just like, you could just feel their strong like, and they're saying stuff that just doesn't resonate, and you're like, I want to get away. You're feeling their energy. Right. Does that, that make it's, sense? It's certainly, you know, that you see that every day in life. Absolutely. Uh, we're, I was having a conversation with somebody today. They were, they were in a break room with somebody, and the, the air was thick. Where right. did we get that term? Well, because the air was thick. There was a right. lot of, you know, some people would call it spiritual energy. Some people would call it uh, something else. But this, is, this isn't this is like a spooky type of thing. This is more of really basically right. a, 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 a touch that, that soothes. It's not a massage. No, it's not a massage. You're fully clothed and you you just hands on. And it's, it's sometimes when you're, when you when the practitioner is touching you might feel chills you might feel in, instantly relaxed you might feel heat you might feel emotions that arise because it, maybe they're touching certain parts of your body that it was like like your shoulders where as we all know the weight of the world sure. right mm -hmm. or they're touching your head which that um, i call it the um, stinking thinking that goes constantly in people's head and then it, maybe they touch in their heart, and all of a sudden it's like these emotions. Because we, all this energy, and all, even when we're talking to people, we, we feel it. It resonates to our body on different parts of our body. Right. And, you know, I do the Reiki, but I ended up going up to another modality called IET, which is Integrative Energy Therapy. Okay. Why I liked that was that there was, it spelled out specific parts of your body where you do hold, like, um, down in the lower part is where you hold fear. And think about the stresses that you have in your stomach. How many people have stomach issues? Mm -hmm. That's stress. Um, your heart, the heartache. And so the IET has certain trigger points that, as a, as a practitioner, we, we gently touch in certain areas. But what I like about this one is we're able to release some of that stuff, like your how, body. How really does that work? I, you know, I, I know that there's acupuncture that is supposed to relieve certain things. And it does. I go, I've go. i gone to acupuncture, too. I right. love it. And, and a massage. I know when I give my wife a, a, a foot massage, <laughs> actually, she passes up or almost. But right. She re, she's on her feet all day. But it, it really, you could just see her just fading away. Because <laughs> uh, they've got the, the reflexology. So there's, right. like, so many pressure points in the body of your food that relates to everything. Mm. And also, it's that human touch. Mm -hmm. It's that kindness that somebody's actually taking the time to, to touch you mm -hmm. and to make you feel better. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times people are frightened, like, oh, my God, you're going to touch me, and what's that going to make me feel like? But, like, when I do a treatment, because when people are on the, the bed, they, you can tell that they're cranking, like, why oh, is sure. she touching me there? What, how am I going to feel there? Why am I feeling cold? And I do a guided meditation, which you've heard of meditation and how, if you have, it's, it's an important thing. Like, they now really say meditation goes a long way for everybody. And mm -hmm. if everybody could take a moment to really quiet their mind, right. um, but off, it's hard to do. Shut off the cell phone. That's another thing. Yeah, I, I keep going back to my wife because she does mammography. Right. And she tells me on a daily basis that when, when women come in either for their first time, they're so nervous. I, they're frightened. Right. Uh, and and they, she has to, you know, there's a certain amount of pressure that they have to apply to, to get a good right. reading. Right. And they just, she calms them down. Right. She puts her hand on her shoulder, talks in, in a very soft voice. Right. And, and, and all that time is, is, half of her time is she's doing the modality or whatever, but she's also calming. Right. Because, and and that, that calm voice, the touch, right. it, it helps. But they're, they're frightened. They're, and they're frightened to be touched. Right. It's and a, it go, well, it's, it's an impersonal kind of sure. thing. You don't want to be there having a session you know, like that. There's a lot of things going on in there. Huge, mind. because you're like, are they going to find something? Right. Is this going to be upsetting? Is blah, blah, blah. And all this stuff is going through. So even before you get there, and again, when somebody comes to me, before they get there, if they don't know what I'm going to do, I definitely sit down and talk to them. And I explain my background, like, how did you get involved in this? Why did you get involved in this? Right. And, and mine was stress management meditation class that I took at St. Joseph Hospital years ago, like over 10 years ago. And that was the art of breathing, learning how to breathe. Like, I thought I was breathing. But when you look at people and you're like, I'll say, Kevin, breathe. Most people go, right. like that. 
And it's the belly. It's the belly. I've been, I've been to Bikram it's the yoga, belly. Bikram yoga down <laughs> yeah, yeah. on Pine Street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> breathe, breathe. Well, yeah. and it's so funny that when you're in a situation and you're upset about certain things, it's so, if you can just say, can you give me a moment? And you kind of go. And you do those belly breaths and mm -hmm. then say, now ask me the question. Right. You almost think clearer. But it's like even throughout your day, like you're working and you're frantically trying to get something done, I didn't breathe. You're breathing, but you forget to right. breathe. It's, so it's, it's like. It's all shallow. It's all shallow. Yeah. Breathing. And it's so funny when I talk to clients, and most of the time when I get them and I do energy work, I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell you something. Like, breathe through the belly. And they're like, fill up my belly. And they, they stop right here. So I give them that lesson on how to do that. And literally, when they come and see me, it's, it's great because I end up giving them tools to go home and be like, okay, I'm going to try this. And they're implementing it and working it through their life. Right. Are you seeing any successes with, with some of your, your clients? People are coming to you. They're calling you up. All yeah. right, what is this about? How, how does it work with you? They call you up. They say, I, I, I saw you. I saw your website. I Most go of the to time, I, I have a studio that I work out of down in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, it's out of Gloucester, Magnolia area. I was gifted a space to work out of there. So it's a spa, Jennifer's Hair Studio and Spa, that I work out of. And I, I'm there a couple times a week, and I talk to people. Plus, other people are talking about it. And, you know, somebody might say, you know, I can't sleep at night. I'm having headaches. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about boop, boop, boop. And they go on and on and on. They're like, go see Lisa. Mm -hmm. And they come out, and they're, they're more relaxed, and they're calm. And what I love about it, it has, it has lasting effects. So they go, and most people go, and they're like, Lisa, you have no idea. I just slept for 10 hours. I haven't slept that good, and I can't <laughs> even tell you how long. And it's also, they're taking the time to take care of themselves. So I honor that, too, because right. it is. This is a whole different they're modality. They're stepping out of the box. They're going to, all right, I'm going to try this. Right. All right. It's, not, it's not a hum type no, of thing. No, not it's, at all. You know, I'm busy. very down to earth, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, I'm an artist. And I always say, I've been there. Like, they'll be sitting like, on the couch that I have that I'm like, I've been exactly where you are. And I want to let you know that I still go to my Reiki master to get energy work done because I love that feeling because, you know, we're all human. Right. So life can be going around, like, really good, and then all of a sudden, oh, God, I'm having a bad day. I mean, everybody has that kind of stuff. So scientifically, how is this working? Is it you're, you're, you're laying hands on people, <laughs> and, and, and it's what's going on? You know, I was certified to do this. So. Okay. By all means, everybody has this in them. But I took a class, and I took, you know, Reiki 1, 2, 3, and master level. Mm -hmm. So we were given instructions. We were given entunements. We're given these certain symbols that we use. And it's all about using those. Mm -hmm. And then I was given, you know, the modality for IET. I was given all this stuff. So I'm in tuned, and I know how it works. And to be honest, I'm just the conduit. Okay, yeah, that's what okay? I wanted, yeah. So when somebody's like, oh, Lisa, you made me feel so much better. You know, be it you believe that there's other people on the other side or angels, spirit, God, whatever religion you have or not have, there are ways to tap into that and to tap into other dimensions of energy. And so I have angels, guardians working through me that when I put my hands down, I've been in tune. So whatever I'm putting in a certain area of them, I am saying, you know, help me clear whatever needs to be clear. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I, do, I work with it. So I go in there with an intention. I always have a specific, you know, I'm surrounded and I'm always protected in this modality. Because I don't want to, at the beginning, I was picking up people's ickiness. See, I, I wanted to ask you a question about that because, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking in the beginning where, you know how you walk into the room and somebody's got some good energy? Right. And then you walk, somebody else walks into the room, and they got some bad energy. Mm -hmm. well, what if you got some bad energy and you're passing it on to them? I mean, you got to be kind of clear yourself, right? Right. So. Well, here's a theory on this whole thing, too. Like you say, the bad energy. When people are, let's say, at verbally attacking you and they're miserable and all this stuff, and they're attacking you, it's their stuff, not your stuff. Right. So it's, you've got to, re, to kind of reframe it. And I, I've had people in there. I had a client one time that came in, because I do intuitive readings too, came in and I'm doing work and I'm talking to her. And I'm saying things that were going on in her life. And she's like, no, you're wrong. No, that's not who I am. No, you are completely wrong. And I was like, okay, well, 
I'm just the messenger. I'm giving you this information because the way I look at it, this is going to help you. Mm -hmm. So it made me feel like, ooh, I don't, I don't know. Like, I felt really bad that I couldn't tell her what she wanted to hear. Two days later, I get a phone call, and she completely apologized for her behavior. Interesting. Which I thought, because she was having validation, like, you know, Lisa told me if I was to talk to this person a certain way. Yeah, but you're not a medium, is it? You know, mm, you know there are certain ways I can talk to loved ones that have passed over. It just depends who I'm with. Okay. And again, when you get into this energy work, you're opening, as a, a healer, I'm opening myself up to other things that could happen. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I do. I do. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, the whole thing is it, it's something that I've been hearing over and over and over again. And I think the, the art form of, of just touch, though, is, Absolutely. is releasing that in itself. I, I, giving somebody a hug goes a long way. Absolutely. Right? It, mm -hmm. it does. In, 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 when was the last time you hugged somebody? I can't. I, I hug my wife every day. But, right, right. But <laughs> I don't know if that counts anymore. It does because it's, it feeds your soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if nobody is touching you or you're not allowing them to touch. Because, again, remember we just said a person who has bad energy or something. Mm. I wonder when the last time they got hugged. And I'm not saying we're going over to hug everybody. Right. But it's like when somebody is that angry, you don't even want to be around them. <laughs> but those are the type of people I want to see right. because there could be stuff in their life that they're so afraid of sharing. And that's what I like about Reiki or energy work is that when you're on my table, I could be clearing stuff or they're clearing stuff and they leave and maybe that anger that they had inside them is not there anymore and they can't understand why right. because it was holding them back. Sure. It's like, think about this. We have stuff in our lives that have been good things, bad things that have been smeared on us since we were a little kid. Sure. Yeah, and, and that stays inside of us. And again, that's why I like the IET, because we can clear. We're like an onion. You know, when we're going through life and things happen, and we, we, we have that ah moment, an onion layer is peeled away. Right. And then something new reveals. And then we, we work on this other project, and we, we finally finish that book we wanted to do. And it's like, OK, what's the next thing? Another onion layer is coming yeah. off. We are marvelously created. Yes, uh, we are. So uh, what's your website? Where, how, do, how do people get in touch with you? And, and they can go. It's very lisagreenleafenergy.com. OK. And I'm on, I have that website. And I also have a Facebook fan page. So you can go on there. And all my contact information is there. And if you want to even read a little bit more, there's a lot of information that I have on there, too, that really help. And again, I offer a 50 minutes free consultation. So call me up right. and say, this is how I'm feeling. What do you think you can do? You take Visa Vest, Visa Master. I do. Okay. The square. All right. All right. We can't talk about price. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Well, and I appreciate about it. This. It was great to see, be oh. here again. Okay. And hopefully, if, uh, if, if you want to try something new and uh, you feel as though you know, you're not sleeping at night or you, uh, you want to release some tension, this might be something that you probably would be interested in. Uh, contact Lisa and, uh, you, through the website. And, uh, LisaGreenleafEnergy.com. <laughs> and until next week, thanks for watching Gate City Chronicles. Thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles. And we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark Dean of Clean, the carpet cleaner in Nashua. You can reach him at 603-630-1743. And if you would like some more information about Gate City Chronicles or want to be a guest, contact me at GateCityChronicles at gmail.com. Until next week, thanks for watching. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, 
board of directors, or underwriters.